The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. It's on? Okay. Good morning. My name is Ade Monare. Uh, my husband and I, with eight or seven others, Indonesian, Emmanuel Indonesian, graduated from School of Lay Ministry uh, in 2002, I think. Um, and then um, those, are, those are really quite an experience for all, all of us, and especially to me, because after that, it's just add anything God's work, like get to me and then just ask me to help out. So it's really, it's really changed my, my life while I'm here. Um, today, beside me and my husband, which is in red, um, so every, gradu every, every year there's a graduation. Um, it's a two years, but it's overlapping. But every year we have gradua gradua uh, graduation. Um, in the Synod Assembly in June, in Worcester, there were about uh, 12 um, graduations. We didn't, we didn't have those um, last year. Um, I was uh, able, not able, I was glad that I was also being asked to serve as the board in the School of Lay Ministry. Uh, and then I think Jill also served as the board of member. I don't know which is she's still doing it or not, but it's it's one of us having been graduated and we learn something and we feel something that we want to also serve back. Um, today, besides me and my husband in red and Jill and uh, Jerry Schultz at the back with it with blue shirts, uh, I also see Edmi Pakasi, one of the Indonesian, and Rani also. Um, graduate from School of Lay Ministry, um, and the toppings, uh, they are here and would like to share their message, what they share, what they experience after the School of Lay Ministry. Jill, um, the toppings, Yvonne and Dick. I have to share from my personal experience, give you a little overview in what was the richest part of the school lay ministry for me. Um, it helped my faith grow. Um, the year, you have two years, and the year of Lutheran theology was excellent. The presenters and their lectures were outstanding, but the Bible year expanded my understanding and really changed my spiritual life. Um, faith is a gift and it's on a continuum. And Lil Riley is going to begin to believe what her family tells her and what she learns at church. And then when you're an adolescent or a young adult, whenever the process happens to you, you begin to think about what you've been taught, you get some ownership over it, um, you might reject a few things, but you, you generally pick out what you believe, and you're with like-minded people. T 
teens and young adults always like to be together with someone that feels the same about them. Then in midlife, whenever that happens, we begin to grasp the limitations of what we think. Uh, personal experiences lead to paradoxes and ambiguities. And we begin to be more open to other people with other belief systems. We can hear a little more than we were able to hear before. Ultimately, on our faith journey, we want to love people with God's love, not just our own love, because our own love is shaped and limited by our life experiences. It's grace that carries us into God's love. OK, so the Bible reading, why that changed my life. Um, when we read the Bible, we bring our theology, our faith, culture, philosophy, and experiences to the process. God is bigger than my pres pres presuppositions and my understandings. The Bible, when I was young, I only heard scripture in liturgy, and I was never told directly, but I understood that only the educated, ordained people could interpret scripture and tell me what it meant. And I was comfortable in that for a while. And then when I began to search further, I believed that the Bible was the in inerrant word of God and that every single word was God's absolute truth. If God said it, I believed it. Even if I didn't understand it or grasp it or had a conflict, I blind belief. But Luther describes the Bible with a beautiful image. He talks of the Bible as the crash. The manger held the Christ child. The Bible holds Christ. We are called to talk about the living word with our human words. The Bible was written by inspiration, but by humans with human words. People through time have brought different skills understandings, perceptions to scripture. And, and here's an example of that. The prodigal son. As Americans, we read the prodigal son, and I think many, many people identify with the prodigal son, who squandered the riches that he had. I think in later years, we've come to realize that the son who stayed home was just as needy because he never got to go to the party celebration either because he was too judgmental. But we don't think of other factors. But people from other cultures that read the prodigal son, if they have governments that are not good and people have needs underneath them, they see that story through the focus of, it was a bad government. There wasn't enough food for the people. People that live in countries where there are droughts and not a food supply read that story and think, uh, Mother Nature just didn't produce. Just kind of the luck of the draw with the soil. The way you look at that changes the way you experience it. To live the living word, we're called. We're called to speak about the living word. And we can only do that with the grace of God. God's leading, our noticing, our mindfulness of the Holy Spirit's guidance, and the presence of grace. And I just thank God that he came down to us and embraces us. The School of Lay Ministry is certainly an experience that I would encourage you to have. It changed my life.
I uh, signed up for the school lay ministry for two reasons. The first was my wife had signed up, and we were very busy at the time, and Yvonne does things pretty intently, so I figured if we were going to have any time together, we better do this together. So that was the first reason. But the second reason was I really wanted to know what made a Lutheran a Lutheran. Uh, we had joined a Lutheran church in our town. We had joined primarily because it was a good church, had a great reputation in the community. It was good size. They had all kinds of programs, good pastor. And uh, it was, you know, we had just heard all sorts of good things about it. But honestly, at the time, I didn't really know whether, what was the difference between a Lutheran or a Presbyterian or a Methodist or an Episcopalian, other than our Baptist, other than maybe style of worship. And so I really wanted to know what makes a Lutheran a Lutheran. And the School of Lay Ministry is a two-year program. Uh, one year is theology, and then the second year is Bible study. And, we, and you can join, you can start either of those years, and at the end of two years, you, you graduate. And so for us, the first year was theology, which was good for me. And what we did is we did a lot of reading. Uh, there were also videos of, uh, you know, some of the foremost Lutheran theologians. Uh, uh, and uh, then we would get together for study groups. And... Uh, discuss these things, and it was a, a, a great, great uh, introduction and immersion in, uh, you know, the revelation that God had given uh, to Luther. Uh, one of the issues, or one of the, one of the, one of the topics that came up uh, in that first year was this, and this is called the Book of Concord, and uh, it gets a bad rap. Uh, people say it's too big, it's boring, you know, nobody wants to read it. I've spoken to seminarians that said that they really didn't want to read it. You know, maybe they had to. Um, but I started to read it, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and in fact, I read it once that year, and I read it again since that time, and, and I highly recommend it to you. But what the Book of Concord really is it's a collection of eight documents, which is the embodiment of uh, Lutheran theology. Or in Latin, it's called the corpus doctrinae, the body of teaching. Uh, one of those eight documents, probably the most important one, is the Augsburg Confession. The Augsburg Confession uh, was written in, in 1530. In 1521, uh, Luther, uh, the Lutheran movement had been banned by... Charles V, the, uh, the emperor, and, and yet the German princes continued, you know, to push for it, and so there was this uh, uh, council, a diet put together in, uh, in 1530. Uh, Charles was trying to continue to ban the Lutheran movement, but the German princes were uh, uh, continuing to, to support it. At that time, Lutheran was, uh, Martin Luther was an outlaw. He couldn't even go, because if he had gone, he would have been captured uh, and maybe executed. Uh, but the Lutheran theologians at that time got together and uh, put together a very distinct document which outlined the beliefs of the Lutheran movement. It was pretty much written by Philip Melanchthon, who was a, a theologian at the time. But it's the owner's manual. <laughs> Of, of the Lutheran faith, the Augsburg Confession. There are other documents. There is the small and the large catechism. Now, I didn't grow up as a Lutheran, uh, and so, but some of you have, and some of you, I'm sure, were exposed to the small and large cate uh, cat catechisms of Luther. But the small catechism was basically uh, put together to teach the most fundamental truths uh, to the people. And I think we probably still use it in Sunday school today. The Lodge Catechism was really aimed uh, at teaching pastors how to teach the people, because in those days uh, there was not a lot of education, uh, even uh, of pastors. Um, so that's two more documents in this book. Uh, as you might expect, theological controversies started right after uh, Luther, uh, right after the original declaration, 
And so by the 1520s, there was a lot of disagreement about what Luther really meant. And when he died in 1546, it got really uh, heated. Uh, and, ex and the whole issue of, 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 of debate and, and, and uh, concern and discord kind of accelerated. And so in 1580, the uh, Lutheran theologians got together to kind of define everything that had taken place from 1517 and what was the what was the the the, the the fundamentals of the Lutheran faith. And what came out of that was something called the Formula of Concord. So the Formula of Concord is the last uh, document uh, in this book. And then in, also in 1580, eight of these uh, uh, important uh, uh, documents were put together in this book called the Book of Concord. Now, some of it, for example, the Augsburg Confession is published both in German and Latin. Some of it is in German alone. The first English translation of the Book of Concord uh, was in 1851. And then this document is the latest one, and this was done in the year 2000. Uh, and one of the uh, translators, authors, is Timothy Wengert, who's a fairly famous and popular Lutheran theologian today, who was a big part of our uh, uh, course uh, in the first year. So I would highly encourage you to read this book if you have not. Now, maybe everyone has. It's not a novel. You wouldn't read it in a you know, couple of nights. But if you read it a little bit at a time, uh, it really helps you understand why we are here, what we believe, and what the revelation is that uh, uh, God gave Martin Luther. And so I would, so for me, this was, this is what I remember of the course more than anything else. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne and Dick. Uh, Jill and Jerry, do you have anything to add? Or maybe add me, or maybe Rani? You have one minute. Dick and Yvonne, thank you for bringing back some really good, important things about your experience. Um, we were trying to figure out when we graduated. We think it was 2015. But we have Adi to blame, I mean to thank. <laughs> and uh, Adi was very, very persuasive because she would, at announcement time, she would keep coming up and she says, oh, school of ministry, you guys got to do it. And it's really important. And Jerry and I kind of looked at one another and said, what the heck, let's do it. I did it for a similar reasons that Dick did. I was not raised, I was raised as a Congregationalist, and when we got married, we decided to join Holy Trinity, and I said, so what makes me a Lutheran? I have no clue. And what is the differences? And School of Lay Ministry not only helped me to understand what it means to be a Lutheran, um, as a couple, we thoroughly enjoyed doing this program together. Our conversations in the evening when we were doing our homework were really pretty interesting. It would, uh, Adi probably would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. But through well, she, that... She was for a year. Well, she was for a year. <laughs> but during that process, we not only grew as a couple, but our faith as a couple and as Lutherans really, really grew. And now when we sit and listen to the scripture... We listen to it differently, and we understand it differently. And it's, it was a, an experience that um, we are very glad that we did. And as Adi, I was invited to be on the board. I'm taking a little hiatus right now. Um, and being on the board is really interesting because I get to learn even more about what the School of Lay Ministry is about. Um, I, I signed up partly like Dick, but also partly like Yvonne, <clears throat> because Jill signed up. But I'm a cradle Lutheran, and I had all this, this is what you believe, and don't ask any questions about it. So I had a lot of questions about why, why do we believe what we believe? And so that was my primary goal uh, when we got to start studying about, especially the Bible. 
and uh, finding out that, yeah, this really is a human document, and it's written by humans, inspired humans, but still, but still humans. Um, the the faith that Jill mentioned, um, we've always both of us have always had a strong personal faith, but uh, it it really helped cement it with those late night discussions that we had. We did a program within the, the school called the Extra Mile, which was an opportunity to, to dig deeper. And uh, the things that we learned, the things we found out, it was absolutely amazing and, 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 and that fun. Was, and that was to dig deeper into the Bible. Um, and Ronnie and Adi, actually, and the four of us were a group. So it was really interesting because we had four very different perspectives as well, uh, which Yvonne said that hearing different perspectives really helps you to understand the bigger picture. So it was awesome. And if uh, we'll be here afterwards, but talk to Ronnie or Adi, Yvonne and Dick, or us. Uh, uh, Tommy or us, and there's, there's actually several of um, Emmanuel that are also, but it is a great program and highly re recommended. Very much recommended. It's worth your time. Thank you, Jill and Jerry. Rani, at me? No? Um, if you are interested, at me, come. If you are interested, School of Lay Ministry uh, registrations close uh, at August 15. So if you want more information, just let us know. Uh, the first thing, I just want to thank you very much to God because uh, he gave us the opportunity to go to this class for lay ministry. That is very, very uh, important for us because we learn a lot uh, about Lutheran. It is very different with us. Not very different, but a little bit different with us. So I get a lot of uh, uh, everything is, uh, I learn from that. It makes me uh, change my life too. And then um, one thing I remember that I think I don't need to talk much about the uh, learn because some people, Jill and everything, already talked about that. I just really remember that one our teacher talked to us that uh, if you don't have to read the Bible, but just remember you have to read the gospel from the Matt, uh, Luke, and then John. Just remember to always read the New Testament. So this is very, uh, I remember that, so I have to practice to read that. But so far, yeah, I still, uh, thanks to God, thanks to Lutheran too, because they help us about the, uh, about the budget, because we know enough money, I just be honest. Uh, Lutheran really help us to pay some about that. So thank you very much for the God, and thank you for the Lutheran. Thank you. I don't have a preparation in writing for sharing about school lay of ministry, uh, but I graduated 2014 uh, in the school lay of ministry for two years, and then uh, I continue again with Jill and Jerry group uh, with, with Ade in this building uh, because I just like it to do like kind of Bible study like that and then also they have a new program with uh, 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 collaboration with Massachusetts Bible Society at the time so uh, that interesting so the reason I came to uh, join school ministry is first I don't understand what is that school lay of ministry that uh, in the process, so I understand the two years program, uh, the simple uh, explanation is like, probably we have a 
like catechism or confirmation class for two years when we are younger. But this is for adult confirmation, but it's more deep. You, you do Bible study and then uh, you share your experience uh, and you know deep uh, being a Lutheran or become a Christian. So I grew up in the country that 86% is Muslim. It's not, not, it's not easy to, to, uh, to become a minority in Indonesia. Uh, but at the time, I feel like a, like a huge tolerance that we be able, even we minority, but we be able to, uh, to have a church, to practice our faith. Uh, and time is changed with the news right now. Time is changed, but uh, I'm thankful that I have that kind of experience. And when I come to this country, I'm thankful that I be able to go to uh, this school ministry. Uh, and at least uh, what I learned that when my children ask me uh, about Bible, about what is that baptism, and what is that how to worship in the, in the church, about uh, Holy Trinity. So, I know the answer because I already learned uh, that from the school lay of ministry. So I, I thank God for this opportunity and I thank to uh, the Lutheran uh, Synod that have this, uh, this program. It's really, really good. Uh, uh, that's help us to be faithful, help us to more understanding, not just only, oh, I come to the church, Oh, I do something, no, but it's really, really more than that. It's helped me uh, personally to help my family. And when other people ask me to, I, I know the answer. I'll, so I said that, oh, how you know? Oh, I went to schooling of ministry. That's, that's what I can do. At least. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Um, I hope you learned something from our sharing. And we are here after worship, if you want to talk about it.